welcome to the voiceover for cartoons panel. But we're not just going to talk about me. We've got some fantastic special guests. Introducing to the stage, Rob Paulson. <laughs> Stephanie Nadolman and Catherine Tabor. Oh, we have water. Rob's consummate gentleman. All right. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having us. And hello, audience. How are you all doing today? That's what we like to hear. So now, uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about your origin stories, your, drama your, your heroic origin stories. O origin, I thought you said organ stories. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about your organ <laughs> stories. Play the kind of Internal or <laughs> origin <laughs> stories, okay. Rob, I've heard you've got your hands on some really good kidneys lately. All right. right. Uh, I'm in the black market, um, yeah, organ Got a lot of heart there, buddy. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah, or, origin stories. stories. So let's go, ahead. Rob. Yes. Well, we got you on the mic. Oh, how did you? How did you? How did you get into this crazy game? Uh, well, I um, went to Los Angeles many, many, many years ago, um, ostensibly to do live action, and that's what I was doing. I was doing TV and movies and commercials, but you find out pretty quickly that there are a zillion average-looking white 22-year-olds with SAG cards, and uh, the uh, when the opportunity arose for me to um, try doing cartoons. Uh, it was a Hanna-Barbera probably in the, I don't know, early, mid-80s. Um, so I started auditioning there. And um, uh, the first cartoon jobs I got were actually uh, at, on G.I. Joe and Transformers. Um, and yes. Then, We've got G.I. Joe and Transformers fans. Yeah, I, uh, I, um, I've been around a while. I was also the entertainment of The Last Supper. Many people don't know that. <laughs> it's a bit of a while ago. Okay. I was uh, Shecky of Arimathea. <laughs> Jesus, what a party. But I... Jesus. I, uh, no, I, I am a singer who became an actor. I went to L.A. to do that. And um, driven st by the same thing that I am driven by now, which is, and no, it's not a car. It's a desperate passion to do what I do. And I've been doing it longer, um, certainly than the two young ladies here at this table, because virtually I'm almost always the oldest guy in the room now when I go to work, but that, uh, uh, it, it is a desperately wonderful way to make a living. Um, and so I started that way as a singer, became a stage actor, got involved in animation, and then made the choice ultimately to devote myself to doing uh, voice work. And what's great is now, and uh, nobody cares what I look like. I'm, I'm <laughs> so grateful to have a job that I would essentially do for nothing. And then I get to come around to all these great opportunities and meet these lovely, wonderful people, who become some of whom have become friends of mine. Um, but all of them are so incredibly kind, and we find the extent to which these characters have meant an awful lot to so many people. And um, what a bonus. It's just a, a pure joy. So thank you for having me. Yes. That was a giant applause. And Stephanie. Yeah, well, how do I follow that? That's greatness. I love it. Um, we have a lot in common in the sense that it's, it's such a passionate thing yeah. and such a joy and, and the bonus of meeting you guys is just amazing. And I could just go on and on about that. But how I started, um, little did I know at the tender age of five and six, um, I actually knew that I absolutely was going to be in show business. Um, mainly, yeah, oh, definitely. Um, I, I was holding a microphone in my hand, singing songs before I think I even understood, and, and walking around with a cassette player and recording things and, and repeating it back. And, and so I, I, I was mimicking sounds and voices and, and sound effects and character voices but, um, before I even knew there was a career to be made doing such a thing, you know, watching the cartoons. Um, but I started out um, singing um, like you did, and um, so I, as I grew up, I did the drama thing and the you know the show choir thing and the pom pom and anything I could get you know my hands on that involved performing, entertaining, making people laugh, teasing my friends, leaving funny voices on their their answering machines. I think I still do that to this day. I have not. <laughs> I'm still a very immature twelve year old, 
But um, I was actually able to um, be able to work with a, the nuclear, nuclear polka band out of Denton, Texas. Um, they actually won a Grammy. They're called Brave Combo. And I was working some, with them, um, seeing some background voices uh, for a project that they were working on while touring with Vince Vance and the Valiants, which is a show band. Um, and I met the producer of, uh, who was recording Dragon Ball Z up in Canada. And um, he said, do you do voices? Because you have this character in your sound of your voice. And I said, well, I've been doing voices since I was a little kid, but I, you know, I haven't really been cast mm -hmm. in anything as of yet. And um, I said, I've done some stuff for Chuck E. Cheese here and there. And so he gave me his card and vice versa. And then when they brought the show down to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, he remembered me and brought me in to audition. And that's how it all began. I was cast as Gohan. I had no idea that they were, look they were looking to cast that character as a, I guess as a female, you know, which is they do all the time. Um, so that's where it all began for me. I'm very grateful. Great to be here. This is amazing. I don't think I want to go home. <laughs> so I will pass it along. Wonderful. Catherine? Well, or do you prefer Kat? Um, we, we can go with Kat now. Go Kat. You know, just because we're all friends here, right? Oh. Yeah. Um, so like these two, I have a real passion for what I do. Unlike these two, I do not sing. Uh, <laughs> not well, anyway. So um, I... I basically just moved to LA to be an actor. Um, I actually wanted to be a princess when I was five or six. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> then I found out you couldn't just decide to be yeah. a princess. You had to either be born one or marry someone, and I wasn't interested in that. So um, I thought I would uh, play one on TV or, you know, in cartoons. And so. I moved to LA and was just uh, like Rob doing on-camera work and, um, and someone eventually just sort of recommended me to an agent and said she's really well-spoken and she naturally does accents and um, uh, so I got lucky enough to get an agent and about a week later I had my second audition which was for a game called Knights of the Old Republic. And, yes, um, I see people wanting to applaud. I, I booked the role of Mission Veo, having no idea like what a big role it was going to be. I, I really didn't know anything about voiceover, and uh, and my agent when I was going into that first job said, "You might not say it's your first job," <laughs> so uh, so I didn't. Um, but um, since then, I'm friends with that director and still work with him on the Old Republic. Um, and it, I just think because I was a big Star Wars fan myself, that when I got the audition, I sort of understood the world and you know what it's like to be in that galaxy far, far away. And that's that has certainly benefited me in my career, which has had a lot of Star Wars. Oh, I was, yeah. was going to say, <laughs> you are Miss Star Wars. I, I keep wondering, like, if I did a search, if I would have played more roles in Star Wars projects than any other female? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look it, into it someday. Honestly, I, I think that's entirely possible. There's a good chance. I you think know. I played more Twi'leks than anyone else. So. <laughs> oh, probably. Because I have, I have copious notes just to keep everybody's <laughs> careers together. So you all know your careers. I have to have note cards. But you've done uh, five of the older public games, I believe, at this point. Is that, sounds uh, about right? I've done probably five Star Wars games, not of the older public games, because I don't know if there are five. Uh, I have... The Old Republic, Rise of the Hutt Cartel, oh, Shadow oh, yes. of Revan, yes. Knights of the Fallen Empire, and yes. Knights of the Eternal Throne. Those become that's impressive. Those become offshoots, though. So yes. like those, I don't even know that I'm going in to do a different game. They just like we go do it, and then. But yes. I've also done the Force Unleashed, the Force Unleashed Two, mm -hmm. lots of Lego games. Yeah, you've done, and, yes. and and for the Lego games, you've done, I believe, both Princess Leia and yes. Princess Amidala. Yes, I've I've gotten lucky enough to play myself and my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, actually, like because we lost her just this year, that was one of my favorite little stories to throw in about Carrie. Um, James Arnold Taylor and I were at Legoland. Where they were opening a big Star Wars sort of uh, event there, and Carrie was there as well. Oh. And they introduced us, and Carrie shouts across the yard, "That's my mother!" Oh, <laughs> oh that is beautiful. Oh, Aww. I love that. Now, um, so you've been doing predominantly Star Wars for for quite some time. Um, are there any any of the the shows or or games that you personally prefer? 
Well, I really, I really love the character of Padme. Um, that was my first big mm -hmm. thing, and I was so new to voiceover that I didn't originally have the audition for it. Um, they were seeing lots of people, including on-camera people, mm -hmm. but my agent at the time called the people casting and said, no, you really, you really have to see her. She is Padme. So I, I got the audition, and I worked really hard on it, and, um, and then I didn't hear anything for a while, and I knew that they were having callbacks. Um, and then I found out that I did get it, mm -hmm. and I didn't even have a callback. They just knew I was going to get it. Oh, so, so you were worried for nothing. Yes, I was like, thanks for letting me sweat it out for the month, guys. <laughs> but, but no, it was really, really cool. And so she's, she's probably my favorite. I love that she's, she's sort of feminine, and yet also will get in there with a the blaster when the situation calls for it. So that's my kind of girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, and Stephanie, you've been both Gohan and Goku, and I think Baby Trunks, I saw. So you've been, you've been so many of, of the wee little Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT babies. They're all, they're all so young. <laughs> you think I, you feel old. <laughs> In real life, I feel really old, yeah. especially around all You're your kids. Constantly, are you constantly kiddos. playing babies. Babies crying, yes, women screaming, you know, whatever's neat, whatever it takes, you know. Yeah. But uh, gotta pay the bills, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, seriously, when you do it for do it for no money, it's just, it's just it just becomes a part of just who you are and what you do. But um, that and East Kai, you know, they, oh, I don't know if you know anything about or if any of you guys have watched enough episodes to of Dragon Ball Z to know the East I Kai. I dare you, you to test me. I don't know exactly. Oh, really? Huge. Okay, because her voice is nothing like any of the others that I do, and I actually kind of, you know, the director was like. Hey Steph, why don't you try try this character right here? Have a look at her. What does she think she's selling? And this is back when the company was really really small. And you know there was I was like I was like oh she probably sounds something like oh my you know and it was just it was, so I just ran with it and he's like huh okay well you're cast because he, he had been he'd been listening to other people and he was like just kind of through that because I was recording that day already and he's like well you know let's just give you know because all of the like I said the kid Goku and the kid Gohan you know they're <laughs> you know kind of down here and this guy you go on go on Goku <laughs> you know they're called kind of similar but you know that one's just nothing like it and so I was like wow yeah I got cast as a female <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> yeah that's phenomenal. So, uh, and, and, and on that subject, you were saying, you know, the similarities between young Goku and Gohan um, right. being father and son. I think that's perfect to have you play both. But I love that you bring really unique qualities uh, to both of those characters. I think Goku seems a bit more adventurous, and Gohan seems a bit more reserved, more calculating. Right, well, especially when they're children. Um, yeah. You know, I was cast, what's interesting about this whole thing and how it all played out is I was cast as Gohan you know, in the Ginyu saga, kind of midway through, um, there was no real beginning, like we'd been started episode one. You know, the, sh the show had already been, re you know, was already being recorded in Canada by the Ocean Group. Um, and so, and then when Funimation took it over, so then, so I was, you know, I came along, we all came along in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, like episode 54 or whatever, something, whatever that means. And so... 54 of a billion. Right, exactly. Yeah. I didn't even know how many there were. And then... So that, you know, Gohan was maybe four or five. And I just remember, you know, him crying all the time. And he seemed like he was always scared. And then, you know, of course, he grows up and gets a little tougher and then ultimately defeats Cell, which is unbelievable. But then when they picked up Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball series, and then he, they auditioned me for, I don't even remember if they had me audition for that or not. They were like, you know, let's, let's see what Stephanie could do with that because, well, they're relatives. You know, that's, that's taken her back to, you know, playing her her. Uh, Gohan's father as a as a boy. Yeah. But this boy's been come from a totally different background. Was you know, raised in the woods, and you know he's um, fearless, and so and a little higher in the voice, quite a bit higher in the voice. Yeah. So you know lots of similarities, um, especially as they both get older. But Gohan, you know, has a completely different up upbringing and totally different background. So I think that ref comes through, and that's where the acting really you really have to rely on your acting skills to pull that off, and to really differentiate that, and then be able to incorporate that acting within the scene and what's going on in, in front of you, you know. And then, then you gotta ma match the mouth fat, flaps because yes. you're, you know, this isn't from scratch, you know, you're dubbing. So that's a whole nother thing. So, yeah, so when, Go when Go Goku came around, I was like, oh, you know, I just done all this crazy screaming and yelling and, you know, Clint Eastwood, oh, this fight's so as me, you know, for, 
you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time, and it's like screaming and screaming and yelling and losing my voice and losing my voice and singing on the weekends and, oh my God, when is it my poor voice? What am I doing to myself, you know? And then Goku came around and I was like, hey, I'm Goku, we're up here, this is great, you know? So that's kind of how I interpreted the two difference. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Rob, we haven't forgotten about you. That's true. No you problem. are I'm just surrounded by beautiful women. <laughs> You're welcome. At my age, are you kidding me? I'm so thrilled to the fact that these women would lower their standards enough to be up here with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Keep doing those voices, baby. Yeah, thanks, sweetie. Really. <laughs> I don't yeah, think I, I don't think he could stop if he tried. Yeah, I can't. No, I can't. So um, I wanted to talk to you about all of your work because I love it. And I love you. Clearly we're a man of impeccable taste. I'd like to think that I am. Thank you. So uh, I, I believe you're, you're most well known for Yakko, well, Pinky, yeah. and currently Donatello. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, you're looking at 50% of the Ninja Turtles and one middle-aged white guy. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. Let me tell you. That, well, that's what you know, I was saying earlier. The, the coolest part about this gig is that... Um, uh, that that in terms of your hireability, it really is only limited to an, an actor's ability to be um, creative, um, not afraid to try stuff, and the largesse of producers who are kind enough to hire you. It's really great. Uh, I, I, I think Kat and I were talking yesterday about the fact that when you can go to work with people whom you would choose to spend your free time with, uh, and then somebody gives you money to do what you would do for nothing, and then you come and visit all these lovely people, and you end up being exhausted from saying thank you all weekend. <laughs> it is, uh, you're looking at lottery winners. We're very, very fortunate. So, yeah, I mean, just the turtles alone, I, I got a chance to be involved from a clean sheet of paper with the Ninja Turtles and um, watch it grow in to be this cultural phenomenon. Um, and that alone, I think, was a pretty fortunate sort of, you know, turn of, of, of events. But to get another crack at that franchise 25 years later, yes, uh, and it's turned out to be a pretty successful iteration. It's, a, it's very good. Um, but I, I was almost a victim of my own ageism, because I remember when I got the call, I couldn't believe that, you know, producers were interested in hiring me, and um, that was because I was cognizant of how old I was, because I look in the mirror, but it didn't. It made zero yeah. difference to the production company, which was a real great lesson. And so I got out of my own way and, and went and auditioned and got the job. So uh, yeah, Turtles has been very great. Um, and um, people still love Animaniacs. Thank you very much, Netflix. I, yeah. I don't think I don't think anyone will ever not love Animaniacs. Well, that um, I mean that show raised me. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you got a free pass to the water tower, hot shot. Um, oh my God, I will totally catch in on the free pass. It's uh, uh, that that to me is a great example of the genius of Steven Spielberg and Tom Ruger and the folks who created that show because they knew when they were producing the show that it was supposed to be written on two different levels. It was supposed to appeal to children and their parents, a la Rocky and Bullwinkle and Looney Tunes, and Absolutely. they were correct. Here we are on Netflix, and it is enormous on Netflix. And we haven't done a new one in 20 years. Um, but the music holds up, the uh, cultural references hold up, and um, I, I and my uh, friends, uh, Tress McNeil and Jess Harnell and Maurice LaMarche are enjoying this kind of renaissance of Pinky and the Brain and Animaniacs. And a couple weeks ago, Amblin floated some uh, something out there about there being a, a Stephen was interested in doing a, a reboot. Ooh. Um, and I, I need a big woo from the crowd. I have, I have no insider information, but I can tell you that my Twitter feed exploded. <laughs> And it was such a, a huge thrill to see the, the depth of love for these characters 20 years later on a rumor. It, yeah. you know, so if Mr. Spielberg decides to do it, it would be great. Whether or not they hire us is entirely up to them. But the, the, the fact remains that um, good stuff holds up. Good stuff is oh, good does. stuff. You know, it's, um, 
and to have been a part of that uh, and enjoy, still enjoying the benefits of that are, is a remarkable gift. Okay. Very, very humbled. And I think um, all three of you have very unique, diverse bodies of work mm -hmm. in various different avenues, uh, video games, um, you know, anime, voiceover, and then just... I asked to get involved with anime because it wasn't really part of the landscape in no. Hollywood when I was there, um, or when I got there. Um, but uh, um, I do know Todd Habercorn, and, and um, I've had the pleasure of, of, of meeting you today, and, and uh, uh, um, Mike McDonald, and um, you know, all these really, Caitlin Glass, all these people have really worked at Funimation and gotten and generated remarkable careers doing anime. And it was never part of the deal when I went to LA. Of course, I live and work in Los Angeles, so I've always done, you know, traditional cartoons. Yeah. But uh, man, what an incredible thing to witness! And it's exploded. It's just oh. enormous. It just all it does is give more people more opportunities to be creative. And I love it. Anything that's that allows actors and writers and folks like that to ply their trade is is okay by me. Absolutely. And I was going to say, I think the one you mean. Like I said, you all come from like very unique, diverse backgrounds in, in your bodies of work. But I think the thing that, that ties all of you together is that all of the work that you've done is already considered timeless. Class. Isn't that something? It's amazing. We're so grateful. And I like I, I, I maybe have done ten or twelve games, but nothing like Cat has done. And and I, or or you know um, um, Troy Baker or Nolan North or mm -hmm. Jennifer Hale. We're all good friends. Uh, but man, these folks are becoming rock stars as a result of their video games, and as they should. What do you mean, these folks? No, no, I mean, you're a rock star. It's not false modesty. I'm good at my job, but <laughs> let, let, let's make it clear. I utterly get that I'm a, a, a portion of the deal. I don't draw them, and I don't write them. I'm a singer and an actor, and none of this happens without the people who create the characters. Absolutely. So I, you know, I, when I say that, it's not false modesty, but I get that it's an, a hugely collaborative venture. No, and, and I think um, on, on that subject of, of being you know, timeless, timeless work, Animaniacs specifically had some of the best animation that we had ever seen coming out of that was... Well, for television, had, yeah, oh, it was absolutely. pretty good. 2D stuff for TV, but that was a very expensive show, which... Today, um, the one person who could do it again at that level would be Mr. Spielberg. Yep. I mean, whatever, he, you know, he is uh, inarguably, in my view, the most powerful man in Hollywood and also desperately nice man. <laughs> really, really kind, honestly. Down to earth, utterly approachable, really, really just a great guy. Um, I hope but, he's watching this panel. Uh, you know, I see some people with uh, little phone cameras, so... <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should move to L.A. Hello, Spielberg. Well, and you never know. know. All of you know. But it's an expensive proposition. It was expensive awesome. 20 years ago, and to do it again at that level now would be very expensive. But if anybody can get it done, it would be he. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Kat? Yes? I see you staring over me. Is there something you would like to talk about? No. Is it just my hair? It's Thank pretty you. good hair. I'm, ins I'm inspired by, by Gohan. Yes, Team Super Gohan. Saiyan man over there. I try. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just started getting into Clone Wars. Just a recently. Late. I know. I'm way behind. I'm way behind the curve, but I'm super excited. So, you've done voices for both Clone Wars and Rebels. Yes. So. Like I said, Clone Wars was kind of my first mm -hmm. big gig, and it was it was just amazing. I'm still really great friends with some of the people I met on there. They'll be friends for life, particularly my, my Obi-Wan, James Arnold Taylor. And it was really, like I've said to, to Rob, like being around these guys sometimes, it's like, it's like going to Harvard for acting, and not just voice acting, but for acting, to yeah. be around some of these legends and to watch what they do, and also to watch the integrity with which they do it. And Clone Wars was, was really, that oh, kind of show. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, Corey. And Corey does not like to come to do these things because he's shy. We always right. wanted him to. He, oh, just amazing. Just to sit there and D. Bradley Baker, these, uh. these people just sit there. All right, and D. Bradley Baker out. is inhuman. He is. Literally. He literally human. is inhuman yes. and does all of the inhuman voices. He does. He does. Well, my mind. I saw an, uh, an interview with him where he was talking about his work on Avatar The Last Airbender yeah. using a bowl yeah. to do the voice of Appa. Mm -hmm. 
But that's only that there was no, like he did, I mean, there may have been some post, but I think he just no, put a bowl up to his mouth and just was he's up. The real deal. I'm sorry. He's the real deal. And, and uh, uh, he was Perry the Platypus on uh, Phineas and Ferb. And, yes. But Welker's the same way. Frank does the same thing. You know, when he's doing the lion in the Lion King, the roars of Simba, he just takes a you know wastebasket and puts it by the microphone and... <laughs> Does this roar? It's crazy. Like I don't have the torso of a lion, so let me just oh. get a resonance chamber. Oh right no! I, but they're so like cats. Are, they're so creative and so really, really. She used the right word, integrity. Um, but utterly unpretentious, completely devoid of pretense. The most down to earth, nice people like Corey. Yeah. He would sit here and he would be completely out of his element. But man, he opens his mouth and it's magical. And I've I've known him since 1979. Crazy talent. Mm -hmm. and gets better and better. It's astonishing. Now, you had mentioned earlier, um, going from, I, I think we actually mentioned it, uh, so you were the original Raphael. I was. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we were skirting around the subject, um, but uh, I wanted to, to ask you, what was it like, I mean, differences, between when you were recording for Raphael mm -hmm. and then going in for Donatello? Because I'm a huge fan of, of the new, I mean, I grew up with the original Ninja Turtles, so yeah. huge fan there. But I was amazed at when I was started watching the new Ninja Turtles that this was the and I didn't realize it until I started watching. This is the first time I actually felt like the turtles were teenagers. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. It, it seemed like there were more there were more uh, characteristic mannerisms of kids huh. in this new version. I mean, they're they're goofing around. Yeah. But you know, April O'Neil is your love. Well, also in, in this iteration, April is a contemporary exactly. as opposed to like a big sister. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that worked really, really well for the dynamic of the show. Thank you. And you have some amazing work being Gaga for April. Oh, yeah. It was a really cool thing. And I think they were very smart to make April, uh, they being uh, Sierra Nielli and Brandon Allman, the producers of the show, um, uh, utterly respect the fan base and the franchise. And I think that was reflected in the, in the way that the show was presented. But they were very smart bringing April sort of into our you know, uh, um, age range. And to, to have this unrequited, forbidden love between <laughs> Donnie and April, and apparently people online call it Apritello, which is very sweet. Oh, I like that. Yeah, sweet. And then they threw Casey Jones, so we had a love triangle. And it also was very smart from a marketing standpoint, because uh, we always know that there have been um, boys and girls, men and women, who have been fans of the Ninja Turtles. But to, to uh, uh, specifically make a romantic aspect of the show available um, to draw in a female audience was very smart. And, and it's so sweet to see the way that little girls really dig the fact that, um, you know, Donnie has a huge crush on April and, and she likes him, but he is, after all, an amphibian, which is Makes it a little probably awkward. a felony. And <laughs> so, but no, it was very cool, and I appreciate you noticing those little nuances. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's pretty, it's pretty like I said, I'm a huge fan. It's probably why they gave me the microphone. To talk Thanks, to you. and you have great hair, so there you go. Bless your heart. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, see? Now I'm going to spend the rest of the panel saying thank there you. you. Go. Oh, I can never get tired of thanking you guys. Uh, now, Stephanie, you have done Gohan and Goku since the beginning. Practically. Yes. And uh, you have done both the series uh, and the movies and the video games. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking uh, video games, if you are not aware. There will be a video game panel tomorrow. But I do want to touch a little bit into that, just because it all ties in together. Um, how has it been bringing these same characters to all these different mediums, um, you know, adapting to the various, you know, recording situations needed? Um, for me, it's just basic. Well, for me, mostly the, the video games just incorporate a lot of fighting scenes. Yeah. So it's mainly a lot of exertions mm -hmm. and um, very little um, dialogue. There is dialogue. Um, it's pretty tight dialogue. Um, the t you know the timing, but um, uh, I guess when you've done it so long, you just I mean, and you know where you where you go where you got to go in your throat to, to produce that sound. It's just a matter of you know, for me, it's just being told to do to give the line three times in a row, and then, then the um, the production side of it picks the the best one, and they put it all together. Um, so, you know, for me, it's just it's just another session, and it's usually at a different in a different 
um, studio to do. Okay. They're both in different stu different studios, but um, so it's been quite a while though since I've done one. So um, the studios moved to a different area, and there's been quite a bit of different changes and recastings and things like that. So I've gotten involved in some other things. I've gotten more involved in actually some uh, some the, kind of more of what you guys do. Um, some some non anime stuff, which has been kind of interesting. Oh, good. Yeah, there's some stuff. There's a, a show I'm doing now um, where I'm actually, for the first time, which is cool, using my own voice um, as Deb the Mom in The Adventures of Ryan DeFrades. It's I don't even know if you guys have heard of it yet, but um, it's I it's could not tell me more. Well, it's just, it's not it's not anime. Are. It's American Family Studios. It's it's a very cool show because it's been in development for a while, but it's 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 released. And the first three episodes are released now, and I think on Amazon and. Um, if they're about, it's about uh, Ryan DeFrades. It was originally called Deb the Mom, and I, I play the role of Deb the Mom, and then they changed the name to The Adventures of Ryan DeFrades. I'm like, why'd you change it? It's hard for people to remember that, but either way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, but the, it's a gig. It's a gig, and it's a gig, and it's my voice, so it's like, you know, I don't get to play a mom, and I'm not a mom, and I've always wanted to be a mom, and I, I have not yet had that opportunity, and so I'm a mom, and it's, so it's really cool, so I get to be very nurturing. I'm a very nurturing person, so I've got this kid, you know, and we end up like being these secret agents. We find ourselves in these situations. Very wholesome show. All of them have like a moral to the story. Um, the organization that put the put the program that put the program out is uh, Christian based out of uh, Tupelo, Mississippi. Um, they actually invited me to the um, premiere. I think the premiere was in March or May. Um, so that's, that's something new I've been working on. And then there's a new and show you know too. Pardon me for no, go ahead. Go what's ahead. great to see is that you you uh, you see, and it doesn't seem contrived. You're ex really excited about this. I am. I, I am. It. It's like it's finally. It's kind of something that we've been kind of working on. Uh, when stuff is in development, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen with it. Right. But it's also you know? new. Like you said, it, uh, several times I get to use my own voice. I get to use my own voice, and that is that's great because right. That, what what I love about and I. You know, like I said, I've run a long time, but what I love to see people, and the best thing about this gig is that you see this, it's not like, oh, well, it's another job. It's like, oh, I've got this thing, and yeah. I'm so excited about it, and this is not your first rodeo, but you're excited about it. Right. I love that. Well, I like that it's moral, too. It's like, yeah. I'm not going in there trying to feel like I'm, you know, having to say a certain thing, or, or there's any um, situations I'm comfortable, you know, sure. touching upon. This is a good message. You know, I love, love, love children. Would wish yeah. I would have 17 if I could. So I get to play a mom. This will be a great kid kid show. Uh, hope Good to do many you. more. Hopefully it'll turn out to be a big long-term deal. And then the other pr uh, production I've been working on or worked on through development and unfortunately was recast due to the fact that I live in Dallas is right here on Cartoon Network um, in LA. Um, it's a brand new show that has been in development for many years. It was originally Lakewood Plaza Turbo. It's called OKKO. Oh. Yep. Yeah. So so Courtney's I, working on that. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was cast as KO in that. Yeah. So I did fly to LA a year ago, yeah, to record for that. And then unfortunately, again, the whole being in Dallas and, Makes you know, it's just, oh, I was heartbroken. Yeah. But I'm really excited for the for the people that are putting it on. And, yeah. um, it, you know, it's I, I did get to be involved in the um, the trailer, the pilot, the trailers, and the first three episodes. Yeah, because I, so. I think that was a, a show developed by... One of the folks that works on, uh, I'm, I'm sure plenty of people here in the audience are aware of, uh, uh, not Adventure Time. Um, Regular show? No, what am I thinking? Steven Universe. Oh, yeah. Not Steven Universe. Not. Bravest, Warriors. Bravest Warriors, thank you. Why did I not remember Bravest Warriors? I have a talking cat bug plush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe, I believe uh, uh, one of the folks from there was uh, uh, a developer, and uh, I just recently started... Um, catching up on all of the things I've been missing. But OKKO OK looked fantastic, and I believe you had done um, a lot of the original pilot and promotional stuff uh, for, for OKKO. OK um, I'm trying to think how long ago we started with that, because it was Because like, that, was, that was a long, long time ago. Lakewood Plaza Tarbo started back in, yeah. I know it was like 2012, because I was singing up at this, this giant Windstar Casino in Oklahoma for a senior yeah. breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, we were called the High Rollers, and I know it happened then because I was getting all the calls from L.A., and I was so excited, and I had to join the union, and it was like, oh, my God, oh. <laughs> I was just like, what is all this stuff, you know, and um, it was all done completely outside of my agent. I was like, this is like, what am I going to, you know, so it was a lot of stuff I had to think, start thinking about that was different, and, 
you know, then flying to LA and getting to record last year was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And one of the guys is from Office Space and he's sitting two, you know, two chairs down from me and we're recording these episodes and I'm just like, oh, I'm just like, this is amazing. I can't believe I'm here. And so yeah, so it started a, uh, several years ago. And then of course, then the, then the trailer and the pilot came out. Then, then still we don't know for like a year or more that if the show's going to even take, if we're even going to record any episodes. So you know, that kind of happens sometimes. So you kind of have to have some things rolling and so you know that's why I do my singing and some other promotional type work uh, if I can get some work on some spokesperson type stuff I don't know if you guys do some other you said you were also a singer and and you point and you're an actor I actress do, as well I do on camera I do commercials yeah. you know yeah. do whatever you know you do whatever you feel good about <laughs> <laughs> and that they'll pay you for um, right to right keep, to keep things going and and sometimes they lead to one another so it's, yeah. it's really cool you know um, and we're you know when you're working as an actor, you're lucky, you know. So I can't I can't say enough to, yeah. to agree with that because it is it is a d difficult field, and I know that LA is oversaturated. It's got to be. Dallas is absolutely oversaturated with talent. There's just so much talent, and there's just really just not enough work for everybody. So um, when you say we're, you're grateful, lucky, whatever you want to call it, um, it's it's just the truth. Yeah. yeah. Um, and on yeah. the subject of, of pilot to production, Cat, I believe. Uh, you are Lori on Loud House, yes, which is phenomenal. But I believe, if, if I recall correctly, and, and I love, love uh, that Cartoon Network does this. Nickelodeon. I, was it Nickelodeon? Oh, my, my mistake. <laughs> I read that about you. Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network both do this, um, where they have uh, series pilots, and they combine a lot of shorter pilots into kind of a cartoon, cartoon show see what audience is like, and then they bring the series back. And I believe uh, that was the case with The Loud House as well. There was kind of a, a, a short pilot as kind of a, a pack, um, and, and that was one that, that fans really responded really well to, yeah. and, it, and it got picked up. What was the, I believe that was like possibly a year or more. I think it was the... maybe two years ago, and, okay. and what happens is they do this, they do a showcase where people get to pitch a show and then certain shows get chosen to go into production. Our creator is a, a, a wonderful guy named Chris Savino, um, who had worked on Kick Patowski, um, and came up with the idea for this show uh, with these sisters, 10 sisters and one brother. Mm -hmm. It was originally Rabbits. Really? Just so everybody knows. Um, which I, I think I get it's the just joke. so funny. And he, he, I get the joke. He actually says that at some point someone went, what if they were human? And he was like, <laughs> What if they were? Um, it's a cartoon. We can do anything. Yeah, and, and, and so then they produce some, and they're all really amazing. The level of talent at that point is, is really high. It's, it's not people just coming in and being like, hey, I, I have an idea. It's people who have thought about it, and they've worked on it, and they, they have the artists come in, and they put these things together. And Loud House um, got chosen to, to, to go to pilot, and now we've announced you know, that we're doing... I think we're on season three, um, and also uh, you guys did. You guys did an episode. I've done probably, I've probably done three or four. I'm doing one on Monday. Um, yes, so am I. We're, we'll be working together. Well, Paulson, Monday. you've done everything. Oh. But he, um, they did a. They had the. They had an episode where the sisters. It's what if the sisters were actually brothers instead of sisters? Ooh. And um, it was the turtles who came in and did the brothers. So I can't remember what it's called. That's so perfect. Yeah, but oh it, was, it, was a really, it was a really funny episode. Yeah, but, this, but The Loud House is, a, is a, another example. I've been really blessed to work on projects that are quality, have integrity. The people behind them have real heart and we care about what we're making. And when those do well, um, then it's just, you know, you feel even luckier to be working, so. Absolutely. I was curious about Loud House because that is a show that, you know, conceptually is 11 kids, yes. like, all at the same time. Yes. Um, were those group recording sessions, or did you all do individual, because that's, that's a big group. We do group recordings, but at the moment, we do them in about, usually in two groups. So okay. if you have a, if you only have a couple lines, you come in early, you knock those out, and then the rest of us do the group record. Um, and right now at Nickelodeon, though, it's really cool. They are building a new studio, Ooh. and we are going to, at some point in the next year, we'll see if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. Like, we may never finish, because if, you, if you've got a lot of people working together on a session that you like, 
there's joking and things go off the rails and you're like, are we actually going to finish this today? They might not um, allow you to record anymore together at that point. We'll, we'll see, because it's, it's such a fun, 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 fun group. So, but yeah, so at some point um, this, this year we'll be recording together. And we've also started, you know, like doing some behind the scenes stuff and filming some of the stuff that we do. So there'll, there'll hopefully be some, some footage of all of us recording together too, which I think will be really fun. Cause I, love, I love watching the behind the scenes stuff. It's phenomenal. Uh, Rob, uh, on the subject of group recording sessions, I believe Animaniacs and Ninja Turtles, those are group recording sessions as well, correct? Well, they, uh, it's always preferable to me. I yeah. prefer being around other actors. I don't, I don't really like it when I am being picked up uh, on my own. I, I shouldn't say I don't like it. It's not preferable. I'm grateful to be working, but <clears throat> yeah, I think that um, uh, with all the original Turtle episodes uh, were... All of us together. Pat Fraley, who was Krang, Townsend, Mikey, uh, Barry Gordon was Donatello, I was Raphael, Cam Clark was Leonardo, and uh, um, James Avery was um, uh, Shredder. Yep. And um, Pete Renaday he, he was... He will always Shredder. be my favorite Shredder. Yeah, yeah he was. Hands and down. he was such a bigger-than-life man. I mean, he was a physically a big man, James Avery. Um, but really just a large personality. He's a delightful fellow. Um, but certainly, <clears throat> I always prefer having the other actors around because as the phrase, you know, a high tide raises all boats and you work with people who make you better. Um, uh, and a maniac's pinky in the brain, my goodness, when you're in a room with Frank Welker and Tress McNeil and Maurice LaMarche and Jess Harnell and Billy West and all, it just, it makes you better. Um, yeah, he's just silly. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but, um, on the latest iteration of Turtles, we would be together as much as we could, but two of the actors, Sean Astin is, is uh, Raphael now, and Seth Green is Leonardo, so they have pretty um, um, vital, vibrant live action careers. Yes. So uh, logistically, it wasn't always possible for us to be together, but it certainly is preferable. Mm -hmm. um, and regardless of whether, I mean, all of us are pretty solid improvisers, and, and as, Kat was alluding to uh, the sessions can kind of get off the rails because you have a bunch of um, chronological yeah. adults, but yeah. we start bouncing off the walls. <laughs> but regardless of whether or not uh, whatever people are improvising ends up in the show, there is, in my view, in my, my own sort of uh, um, you know um, experience over years and years and years, but it ends up making the show better. Because the people who are bouncing off the walls and, and getting a little bit nutty uh, uh, bring a, a level of energy and, and commitment to the project that ends up on the screen, irrespective of whether or not the actual words, yeah, it's just, there's a, a vibrance that really helps. Mm -hmm. um, but they're all such good actors, and new ones come along all the time, uh, but uh, they, they all, we all make each other better, and I'm a far, far better actor for having worked with all these people um, than I, I, I could possibly have imagined. It's just ridiculous. Oh, there. absolutely. Now, um, Stephanie, doing the anime work, that, those are predominantly solo sessions, if I recall. Yes, they are. Yeah. Um, they are, unless you're, unless you all want to pile in the booth and do a Wallace session, those are always fun. You know, four or five oh. of us in there, you know, squished up against the booth, you know, and then they'll just run the film and we'll just have some fun just saying these random <laughs> things and let it go. That's, it's so funny to like, you can, when you pull out some of the things we've said at some of those sessions. But I, I was actually curious. Yeah. What, 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 what kind of stuff? Oh, just saying? some of the, you know. What like, kind of stuff do you see? Excuse me, is this your, excuse me, ma'am, but is this your leg? You know, just, <laughs> just stupid stuff. Like just, and then, and then we'll laugh. Yeah, you know, we'll try not to laugh at some of the things because it's supposed to be, oh, no, no, this is a very serious situation. Oh, no, <laughs> Sal is killing everyone. Perhaps we should be quiet. Right, right, right yeah. Yeah, it's mainly the, you know, the city scenes, you know, with, with, with Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, you know, it's, Seems like it's like we're always on some planet somewhere, but <laughs> Namek, I don't know. But um, yeah, and so starting out, you know, being cast as this character with this anime that I'd never heard of, of this this featured anime that I'd never heard of, um, Japanese anime. You know, it was all completely foreign to me, and um, literally, I mean, I had no idea what this was all about. But uh, so starting out was really like, what do you guys want from me? <laughs> you know, and I was this was a long time ago. You know, I was cast in 1999. You know. 
and started doing my, the recording back late that year. And uh, so we would come in, you know, one at a time based on our, um, our line count. And um, I remember starting out and then we would, once we got the voice that the director was satisfied with, um, each session, you know, for the first few times that I came in, he would have, we, I would need a voice reference. And then, you know, once, once I came in four or five times, it's off to the races. Let's go. I got it. Let's go. You got it by but, heart. Yeah. I was like, I know, I know where to go right here, you know, and being a singer, I don't know if you've noticed and you may, I, I'm sure you'll agree with this being a singer and, and having been a singer since I was a child. I mean, um, you just, you, you come become so familiar with using your throat and your yes. voice and where, how you, how you produce those sounds and where they and come from. And your breathing. And your breathing and your, and, and, and the, um, and, and, and also on another note, on another level, have being a, a being in the dub profession, um, the timing, the rhythm was, was huge. Um, okay, I'm watching it, and you know, with with me with anime, we would we just let it roll, and we'd give it a shot. And if I miss missed it, they could if they didn't want to move it back and forward, we would do it again. Well, I had, while at that point, I'll I'll have already seen it on the screen and seen the flaps, and I'll usually know exactly what to do. And if I either give another one right after, or we re, they rewound it, of course, like I said, this is the year 2000, they would have to literally rewind the tape, yep. and then we would do it again. But my rhythm and, and, and everything I learned from singing and from, and from music and from studying it in school and, and really contributed to it. But it was, it was, there was a lot going on in, 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 in the session. And so it was really, you know, it was up to the director to kind of t tell the story. Um, of, okay, okay, now, because you jump ahead sometimes. Okay, now here we're here and this is what's going on. And then they would have to kind of tell you what's going on, and then you would look at look at your lines. Otherwise, you wouldn't kind of really know what's going on. You would just see, oh, shock and awe. And you know, with I don't know how many of you in this room are big Gohan fans um, in particular, but you know, Let's Gohan really. Round of applause Gohan. for Gohan fans. Especially. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. I'm a Gohan fan. Good. Well, especially when he was really young, you know, a lot of besides his crying, and then whenever he got older, and he was like, he had a lot of. Um, just reactions, you know, awe. It was either shock and awe, or awe and shock, or scared <laughs> reaction, or shocked reaction. Well, this, this, he had a lot of reactions, and so it got to the point, you know, where, you know, it was like that. Just for some reason, came very natural, naturally, from came naturally for me to just. Uh, 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 uh. I mean, there was just so many of those always, just constantly. They actually, <laughs> the people there at Funimation named me the reactress. Very quick. <laughs> they did the first cast party. They were like the reactress, you know. <laughs> so it's like okay, and then so that it became a joke. Like every time I came in, so so guys, how many shock and awe reactions do are we going to be doing today? <laughs> how much how much sniveling is Gohan doing today? <laughs> right. How much crying? It's either that or just you know staring at what's going on and not doing really anything. Yeah, and that's why I think he really finally. Unleashes on cell when he gets older and he finally just all right. That's it. You know, oh, he'll yeah. take this 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 is this and then you know people that you know They'll take this much and then they're gonna snap Okay, and that's what happens to go on when he it was one of the most beautiful snap moments in all of anime history Oh with teen go on or teen oh, go the, on? The, the, one, the one hand the one-handed Kamehameha. Oh, Kamehameha. yeah, come on. Oh, uh, that's pretty uh, That's iconic it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I love it. Now, I want to talk to you guys literally forever, but we are running short on time, and I want to make sure we get some audience questions. So audience, let's have you stand up if you have a question. Cue over here to this side of the stage. I'm going to walk down using the stairs because I was told to. <laughs> Potty break. <laughs> Just kidding. I kept jumping off the stage. Our lawsuits. Stage... No lawsuits here. Yeah, our stage manager didn't like that. So go ahead. Come on up. And what is your name and what is your question? I'm Jay, uh, all, for all three of you. Um, what's the worst experience you ever had on a stage or a set, any like recording? Ooh. What, I'm sorry, worst, mistake. worst Worst experience. Oh gosh. Uh, worst experience in, in or around the booth. Uh, maybe getting fired, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good It's such a wonderful they way do, to be. They do say that you, you haven't really made it until you've been replaced. So it, it happens like to everybody. I'm the queen of that, as you all know, Kai and Super. <laughs> but 
<laughs> I'm a neither one. So. It, it does. It does happen, and I like some of some of my the people that I've worked with, like James Arnold Taylor and, and D and everyone we know had talked about. Well, it happens to everybody. Yeah. Um, and that it doesn't make it any better if it happens to you. It hurts. That, so that's kind of the that's. It kind of hurts. Cool. It's always a drag to you know because you work so hard to get the job, and even though you're not supposed to take it personally, it's difficult not to when you're replaced, but. That's probably the, you know, I, it, work is such an absolute joy uh, that it's pretty difficult for me to find something that was not good or disconcerting or difficult. It's, it's more, for me, it was more about getting a job and really getting excited and then you kind of get a call and yeah. you're... Mm. Yeah, or you don't get the call and then the show gets released. And then, and then everyone's like, your fans are like, what's going on? And then your, your you know, stuff gets blown up in your email and you're like, what's going on? I don't understand. Voice over so, yeah. work is pretty cush, though, compared to some of the other, like, you know, acting styles. Like, you go in for usually four hours max. Oh, yeah. You know, you're in a nice setting. There's food. There's catering. Um, what? Sometimes, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, there's, there's food and catering. Especially, especially, yeah, no, it's, no, I know, <coughs> it's terrible. But like, and we have great restaurants in Dallas, right down the street from the studio. It's all good. Okay. So I, I've had the the worst experiences, even though they're not really bad. Because again, if you're working, you're you're lucky. But as an on camera actress, if you're working on low budget stuff, the microphones can tend to be a little outdated. So there'll be these big microphone packs that they have to put somewhere on your body. And if you're wearing like you know, a, well, also you're this big. If you're yeah, yeah. And, and if you're wearing a skirt or you know a tank top, it's there, yeah. and you're trying to like do your stuff. So. These are like the lav mics. The, yeah, but like the older they are, like now the packs are pretty thin, but the older ones, if the production doesn't have a lot of money, the, the packs are like yeah. big. And, yeah. uh, but but it's, it, being an actress, you know, it's, it's a pretty good job. It's hard to complain. So uh, to answer your question, uh, their worst experience is loving their job and then just not getting to do it. Yeah, I love especially that. Especially a character you've been playing for yeah. years and years. Oh, oh, yeah. oh no. And then just like, boom, you're just like, what happened? Like, yeah. everything was going so good on, on that show. So, Thank you so much for your question. Thank you. Thank you. And your name and your question? Name's Andrew, and um, I, I'm actually, uh, you guys want a donut? Ooh. <laughs> we got donuts. Thank you. Donut. How about I think we're good for the moment. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good, buddy. Thank yeah. you very much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. That was a good and question, though. It was a good question. <laughs> I like donuts. Who and doesn't your name and your want question? a donut? Um, my name is Ben, and uh, this question is for Rob. Yeah. Um, so, in Animaniacs, you know that um, whenever, like, an innuendo comes up, uh, Yakko, like, uh, you like, get on, everybody. Um, so, like, say, for instance, um, he and Wacko are like playing with like Dr. Scratch and Sniff's uh, uh, bust and like uh, they use it as like a Pez dispenser. Mm -hmm. He goes like, stop playing this my bust. And then <laughs> he uh, looks up to the camera and says, get out everybody. Um, where did that come from? Oh, the, the kiss off. Where, the, where does that come from? Yeah, where did, did the kiss off? Um, well, it was, it's kind of like um, Yakko was without question inspired by Groucho Marx, and um, uh, that Good Night Everybody is kind of like this sort of archetypal, um, you know, it's a pleasure being here, and, and the, and the uh, it would be, it's kind of like a, the equivalent of a rim shot, so that if you say something like, fingerprints, fingerprints, no, I meant fingerprints. <laughs> Good night, everybody! You know, that, it's, it, yeah, but um, boom, it's like, Okay, we can't go any farther because we've just been <laughs> fired. And it's like that. The late great Kenny Mars played Beethoven, and he kept saying, uh, "He says I'm a I'm a penis." I said, "What? You're a penis? You can't say that on television. Why? I'm a penis. I'm a penis. I get, get, we told you you can't say that. Don't everybody." And, and, uh, so it's it's just you know a, a sort of Groucho Marxian way of saying, "Okay, that's it. Curtain. We're done. That's it. We got fired." <laughs> Everybody. So the Say good night, Gracie. Right, good night, Gracie. Gracie. Exactly. There we go. Playing with your bust, you know. If I did that, I'd have two and beat the living Christ out of me, and they should. <laughs> good night, everybody. You know. So, uh, but thank you for asking. Hey. And quick follow-up question from me. Yeah. Uh, do you do the the kiss-off sound effect yourself, or is that in post? Ah, that's a good. 
I don't remember. I think I probably did totally it fun. myself, but they probably also added that in post-production as well. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and your name and your question? Uh, hi, I'm Brian. Hi. Um, and my question, I have two. Uh, it's, it's like a voice thing. Uh, mine's for Rob. Um, I was just looking through your IMDb, and it says that you were in a lot of the Thumb films, like Thumb oh, Wars. I did. I was in Thumb Wars, Thumb Tannic. Uh, what was it like? <laughs> that Thumb. I want to know how you were cast in that. And how it was Steve like Odenkirk is a good friend of mine, and um, Steve was the original producer on Jimmy Neutron and Back at the Barnyard. So when they developed that technology in which they superimposed the actors' faces on Thumbs, they called me and Mark DiCarlo and... I think Maurice did a couple. Um, it was great fun, great fun, and really bizarre. I think in Bat, it also Thumb Wars, I played Obi Wan Kenobi, but my name was Ubi Dooba Dooby. Yeah. <laughs> it was, was it like Ubi Dooby, or something like yeah. that. Oh, it's huge fun. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Um. But thank you for uh, remembering. That's very kind of you. Yeah, and I, I was also wondering if you'd do uh, one of the lines from the Jimmy Neutron movie as Carl Weezer. Which one you want to hear? <laughs> <laughs> I think that just answered your question. <laughs> The one, where, the one where he's on the moon and he's talking about his mom. Oh, and she rubs my tummy and goes, no, 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 no. He God bless you. I, I got $30 million for that. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. See, that's the best thing about what we do. All of us here, we're so fortunate, you guys, and we know it. We know how lucky we are. But any one of us has characters whom you all know, and all we have to do is speak like that particular character, and it just makes you smile. It's the most lovely And that's thing. the goal. I mean, that's the reward, seriously, to see the response and getting out here with you guys is seriously the coolest. Thank you so much. It's the coolest. Unfortunately, we only have time for one more question. I'm so sorry, everybody. We're running late because we're having too much fun. We'll be back tomorrow for the video. Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. And there's no reason we can't talk about not video games at the video game panel. Sure. We talked about video games today. Yeah. Yeah. Are you good with that? We, we can talk about whatever they want. Whatever yeah. voice acting questions come up. Awesome, I'll be in charge. Hey, Dad, the color of your outfit is the same name uh -huh. as me. Oh, my God, they finally got our start. Thank you. All right, and your question. Um, my question is for Ron, unfortunately, so we're going to keep that going. How much of the uh, Yakko Sings the World Country songs can you still do? Oh, oh my god. Oh. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Paulson, taking well, a sip of water. If you, if you, well, I'll tell you. <clears throat> Let's see. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, too. Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guyana, and still. Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and then for the Chile, Brazil, Costa Rica, Belize, Nicaragua, Bermuda, Bahamas, Tobago, San Juan, Paraguay, Uruguay, Suriname, and Costa Rica, Barbados, and Guam, Norway, and Sweden, Iceland, and Finland, and Germany, now on peace. Switzerland, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Italy, Turkey, and Greece, Poland, Romania, Scotland, Albania, Ireland, Russia, Oman, Bulgaria, Saudi Arabia, Hungary, South Africa, and Iran, there's Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Jordan, and Germany, and Spain, and Bahrain, England, New Zealand, Morocco, Belgium, and Portugal, France, and Denmark, and Spain, India, Pakistan, Burma, Afghanistan, Thailand, Nepal, and Bhutan, Cambodia, Malaysia, and Bangladesh, Asia, and China, Korea, and Japan, Mongolia, Laos, and Tibet, and Indonesia, the Philippines, Ireland, Taiwan, Sri Lanka, New Guinea, Sumatra, New Zealand, and Korea, and Vietnam, Tunisia, Morocco, Uganda, and Greece, and Bahrain, Djibouti, Botswana. Most of the time, it's one that can be a Guinea, Algeria, Ghana. We run in Los Angeles, and now we talk about the Spanish Sahara is gone. Niger, Nigeria, China, Liberia, Egypt, and Nina, Gabon, Tanzania, Somalia, Kenya, and Mali, Sierra Leone, and Algeria. The homie, Namibia, Senegal, Libya, Congo, and Congo, Zaire, Ethiopia, Guinea, Bissau, Madagascar, Romanda, Mario, and Gaman, Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Yugoslavia, Kuwait, Mauritania, Pennsylvania, Monaco, Lickerson, Malta, and Palestine, Fiji, Australia, New Zealand. So. So, all of them, all of them, all of them. So, all of them, the answer is Thank you for asking, that's very sweet of you, and thank you, my fellow thespians, for being so 
kind and allowing me to. Oh, you we, we can't I stop the song early. I feel like that's God. honestly like when stuff like that happens in those moments <laughs> when a band asks, I feel like we're kind of witnessing a little bit of magic. Oh, <laughs> and I think it's awesome. Thank oh, you. I loved it. And being a singer, I heard, I heard all the modulations. I was like, listen, I would have been singing harmony, but I don't know that song, and it would take me forever to learn it. Well, since we've got you here, and you'll get a kick out of this, I, I, this is rare. Um, people have asked me today, and I actually, I'm going to do this because I promised a couple of folks I would. Um, Mr. Randy Rogel, who wrote that song, um, has written an, a verse that includes all the countries of the world who have sprung up since that was written. <gasps> what? So we don't do it often, but, and Randy, of course, is here, but... Yeah, listen to this. Montenegro and Bosnia, Herzegovina, the Soviet Union is gone. South Africa, Georgia, Moldova, Latvia, Belarus, Azerbaijan. Uzbekistan, hey. Kazakhstan, hey. Then there's Tajikistan too. Hey, Turkmenistan, hey. Dagestan, Armenia, Tonga, Palu, Lithuania, Serbia, Kosovo, U.S. Samoa, the Balkans, Brunei, Macau, and Crimea, then Eritrea, Ukraine, and Estonia. Here's Macedonia, New Caledonia, Eastern Slavonia, Ivory Coast, and Cape Verde, Andorra, the Solomon Islands, Dubai. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Come on down and see us and sign stuff. Yeah, we'll be